In the early 80s, it was still a wonderful time because it seemed like everybody was curious about gay life. People wanted to hang out with gays, and my co-workers where I was teaching were just fascinated that I was going to Studio 54, and I was going to all these clubs, and they were very, very curious about my life. And I was out. I was out to all my um, fellow uh, teachers. Many had asked me if they could come in and see where I lived in Greenwich Village, and they had heard I have a triplex on a beautiful street in Greenwich Village, and they wanted to see it. And I said, sure. So we got together a group, and it was all planned. And I had done some real preparations. I had contacted a friend who had a loft. I had contacted a friend who had a brownstone. And I had contacted a friend who lived in a high rise. And I th thought that I would show this group. They were all women. They were all women who adored me. And that, uh, that I would show these women about four or five different types of living spaces in Greenwich Village. And they were ecstatic. They were so excited. And I was excited. Well, that weekend, before they were, the weekend before they were going to come in, Rock Hudson died, 1985. And before that, AIDS was in swing, but it wasn't in the public consciousness that much. And that death and that, those headlines in the paper of Rock Hudson really was a, was a, a milestone in in gay history really and in the AIDS in the history of, of AIDS and HIV in this country because one by one these women called me to cancel. They made all kinds of excuses why next weekend wasn't going to work for them. A wedding, this, that. One of them was totally honest and she said, Richard, I'm scared. You know, what can you say when someone is that honest to you? I, I, I understand. You know, I don't like it. I'm scared too. And um, I, I think that I respected her the most of all the others that made these silly excuses. Nobody knew. And so at least she was honest. But of course, it was devastating to me, you know, that all of these women would cancel. They were my friends. And I was scared. I didn't know. Maybe they were right. Maybe they were right to cancel. Was my apartment infected? Were my glasses infected? Were my, uh, was my silverware infected? Nobody knew. There were no tests at that point to, to figure out where, what it was coming from. For me, um, because it was now in the forefront and straight people were aware of it, and I was working with mostly straight people, it really impacted how I interacted with other people. And I knew that they didn't know whether I was infected or not, so I wanted to make sure I didn't feel any rejection from them. So when hugging became, uh, of, uh, that was okay, but kissing, I was really afraid to kiss people on the lips because I didn't want to experience them turning away from me. And believe me, I'd heard many horror stories about people, uh, people's own family that would not kiss them, even on the cheek, much less the lips. And so I remember making a conscious effort to turn away from almost everyone. Um, in fact, one time, um, my favorite actress, Eva Marie Saint, was in town and she was doing a play. And uh, when we went out afterwards, she kissed me on the lips. And I was taken aback a little bit. And of course, I should have enjoyed that kiss because she was my favorite actress and someone who I revered. But I was almost mortified because I know that I kind of turned away from her and what she must have thought. And I never was able to really explain that to her that, you know, of course, it was my own um, insecurity that um, made me do that. Um, but it impacted me for many years, and to this day, uh, when I kiss someone on the lips, I am reminded that this is a recent thing, and this is something that I've only recently been comfortable with. It took many years to get over that.